Hey, hey, it's Way Hey. I'm back. And in this video, I've got nothing but solid tricks and tips for you, okay? Tips and tricks. For Century Age of Ashes. You wanna know how to do tips and tricks? Do you wanna do tricks and tips? Do you wanna be able to do it all? Do you wanna be able to jump, jump in there and know how to handle yourself? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you some pretty good tips and tricks for each class. Now, I'm only doing Marauder, Wind Guard, and Phantom. I'm not doing Storm Razor because, well, when you first start the game, you're not gonna have access to that unless you buy it. I just wanna do the free ones, the main ones. Shout out to Guts the Berserker. He's a buddy of mine. He really went the extra mile helping me collaborating with this guide. So I just wanna say huge thanks to him. And he has some super good points. I'm gonna add my own points as well. Let's jump right in, beginning with the Marauder. So the Marauder is probably the most technical out of all three classes. To get the best results out of Marauder, you need to know the maps like 100% and get really good at chasing people and really be familiar with quick turns, being able to drift uh, around corners and stuff, get in there, you know, close range combat type stuff. And whenever you're selecting the loadout for this class, you probably want to do uh, frost bolts because it's how you get the most out of the hunting power of the Marauder. The frost bolts will do extra damage to the shields and it will also mess with their steering, make it a little harder for them to steer and maneuver, so easier to catch. In the game mode Spoils of War, this class is broken, totally broken. Its passive ability, which is called the Relentless Predator, enables you to fully recharge your powers and abilities just for getting an elimination or assist. So what that means is every time you kill a gold carrier dragon, you're going to get your abilities back instantly. Hunter's Mark, Gust, Frost, whatever you choose. Now, the good thing with Gust in this situation is you get those two charges back again, so you're basically invincible. You can keep knocking people back. Frost bolts for most situations, Gust or Spoils of War. On to the Wind Guard. The Wind Guard is very suitable for beginners, players who have just started, and this is because they have the ability to heal themselves. Not only that, is it's easy to stay safe and protect your team mates. So this is a very supportive class and it's very fun. Very, very fun. Because you can just hover over to people super fast. It like locks onto them and if you hold down the ability to go guard them, it goes right to them. The ability that enables you to do all that in one action is called Salvation Surge. And you want to activate that thing at all times. Every time it's off cooldown, you want to do it. It's very important. It can mean life or death. And also, I want to make sure you guys know that Whenever you guys use Salvation Surge, you definitely want to make sure there's zero objects between you and your teammate or it will stop you in your tracks and it'll cancel the whole thing. You want to be um, out in the open a little bit more with this class uh, as much as possible, unless it's like a really scary situation where you gotta weave, bob and weave through things, right? Um, so you definitely want to stay kind of out in the open and just keep an eye on your, your teammates and so you can just be there instantly. Now with the Wind Guard, I would definitely consider smoke trail it is so versatile how you can use it uh, you can use it to escape or you can use it to just mix it up go right in the middle of the fight and just mix it up with your teammates because essentially what it does is not only does it make it harder to see it also makes it to where the enemies cannot track you and then also another good tip is after you put the whole smoke trail out you know you smoke the place out then you can hunt down the people that are trying to get out of it they're not going to know exactly where they are and you know, like what well let's go that's a good time to catch them off guard and just wind guard is very good for gates of fire and carnage matches especially for carnage matches because you can't pick up health on that match wind guards are very important you need some on the team all the time next is the phantom so like in every typical rpg or whatever you know the highest damage dealer probably has the least amount of health most of the time that's the case with this guy. The Phantom has the lowest HP, but it can do the most damage. Saying that, immediately, at the beginning of every match, you want to get that shield. I do it with everybody as a habit, especially with the Phantom. The Phantom is very weak at first. You have to get a shield, or you're going to get knocked down quick. The key to this class is the Mystic Shroud. The invisibility. That's the key. Now, it is true, you can definitely use it to get away, to escape. You just go invisible 
invisible and you can just, you know, do your thing, be invisible, run away. But you don't always have to use it for escape. In fact, it's just as useful offensively. So when you are shrouded, whenever you are invisible, your first fireball will do double damage. Keep that in mind. You can sneak up on people and just wipe them out quick. So my favorite thing with Phantom to do is use the mines. The mines are so powerful in this game and they can get you some easy kills, easy escapes. Just, I'm telling you, you gotta plant them in the right places. So what you probably wanna do with those mines, which is very fun and it's hilarious when people die from it. It's so funny to me. I will drop mines right on the ground where they float over the stamina. They always run straight into it, right around a corner Corner. In this game, you want to put the mines around the shields, any kind of drops that they can pick up. Put the mines right there, baby. It's strategic. They don't see it coming. Or you can put them like in the caves, all the tight spaces. You can put them on the walls, put them, you know, on the ground, on the ceiling, whatever you want to do. Uh, nine times out of ten, someone's going to get hit by these things. I'm telling you, it's so fun. And you want to use them as often as you can. As often as you can, because it's a beautiful thing. And when you're getting chased, you can use them as a defense as well. If you fly through a tight space, you drop that thing right where you are, 10 times out of 10, they're gonna hit it if they're not shooting at it already. At the same time, you need to watch out for red mines because you will hit them too. It's gonna happen. Those are my tips and tricks so far for this video. I don't have a favorite class. I like all the classes equal. I love playing all of them and you can use them on any map. I'm sure there's a way to maximize all of their potential on every map. If you guys have any other tips you want to add, the comment section is right there for you. Right there for you. And if you liked any of this content, if it helps you out, give me a like and uh, makes me happy that it helped you. In the next video, I'm going to be going over maps and common tips. Hang in there, stick around for the next time, and please have yourself a wonderful day. I love y'all. Way hey. Ow!